Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So for this week, I want to discuss the real estate market that's going on in Canada right now. Now lately, I've been selling my properties and I also saw some articles. One side were saying, hey, Toronto sales seems to come back up. Maybe it's a sign of, you know, real estate market strengthening. I also saw other articles were saying we can expect another 25 to 30% drop going into 2023. So what I want to do is actually take a look at the market so far since May, ever since the 1% hike. It's also been about two to three months since I've really looked into the market. Um, so let's look into those today. Now for this video, I'm only going to be doing Toronto and Vancouver only. Uh, the reason is because I don't have enough time since I'm moving and I'll also have exams to study for. And also other places simply don't have enough data for me to really go in detail. Uh, now as for Vancouver, I like Victoria. Um, there is a very good website called House Hunt Victoria, which has extremely good data and also analysis. So if you're from Victoria, you're looking for data over there, um, you can check out that website. Now, other than that, I also use a new program this time to better visualize the data. Uh, and actually, there's quite a bit to go through um, to sort through. So make sure you give us a like on the video and also subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And the full report is interactive. I have also uploaded this into the group in Facebook. Um, so if you want access to it, simply join our Facebook group. It's the link will be in the description below and you can take a look at yourself, download for yourself and see if you want to play around with data or isolate to look at your regions only. Now, without further ado, let's jump into today's video. So first, let's take a look at Toronto data together. Now, all the data I've gotten is going to be directly from TREP. So let's take a look at all the properties in all regions, kind of have an overall map and see what is going on in Toronto first. So right off the bat, if we take a look at the chart, um, everything is trending downward overall median price. There's also not as many people were listing. Uh, sales to new listing trend also going down, meaning that the uh, sales is slowing down. Um, the only thing that is slightly different is that sales, total sales is actually bumping back up. And that's what I was saying. There were articles saying, suggesting, hey, is Toronto market bottoming out? Are they coming back? Because sales have picked up uh, quite a bit actually since July. So that's what we're looking at right now in the overall trend. Now we will dive in deeper into each region and also each property type. Even though listing have been slowed down, um, the speed of sales is actually not quite fast. So we are still seeing inventory being piled up. Is right now at 1.3 months across all property type. Uh, average sale price versus list price this is really showing you if they list at one mil, are they selling at one mil? We can see that it is trending downward now. It is sub 100%. So meaning on average, whatever list the price you see on the market, you probably can get some discount. Now, as I was saying, we'll also dive into different regions because some of them have different, completely different stories. Now, finally, we can look at the list days on the market and also probably uh, days on the market. The list dates is really like how many days it has been listed on average since it's sold. Party date is actually isolating the delisting and relisting. So sometimes people try to gimmick it to make it seem like they sold at an extremely quick pace, but maybe they have delisted after 60 days and relisted again. I usually look at probably days on market. So it does seem like, yeah, we're still trending upwards. You know, inventory will sit for at least a month before they're sold. Now, if we were to jump over to all property types, but start breaking them down into regions. Now, the biggest bounce in sales across all property types are going to be Peel, Halton, Toronto Central, York, and Durham. Whereas Toronto East and West are still falling in sales activities. Now, even though these regions bounced the most, as I said, not all of them dropped the most actually. Only Halton and Cent uh, Central Toronto dropped double digit uh, since May. Places like Durham, York, Peel saw the least amount of drop since May, yet the sales bounced back already. So does that mean these regions bounced enough to attract buyers to come back in? There's something we will have to see. If so, then these regions, we may see price plateau overall. Interestingly, Toronto West had one of the biggest drops since May, but sales continue to be lower. This could potentially be a signal that in this region, at least all property type is going to continue to get pressure downward. Uh, and that's something we also want to take a look at and keep an eye out moving forward. But that is just on all properties across all regions. What we really want to look at is this difference uh, property type. So let's break it down and start with detach first. Now here there are quite a bit of activities on these regions. However, it was only Simcoe, Toronto Central, Peel that dropped a lot. 
Not sure about Toronto Central, the median price bouncing so much in a month. This we need to see from next month to really tell what's going on there. It could just be the amount of uh, properties that were listed. Uh, maybe a lot of the cheap ones got sold or delisted and then the expensive ones got listed. That's why there's a sudden jump in median price. York Detach, however, barely dropped actually if you look at the chart, but it bounced back already in terms of sales. So it seems like in this region, there's it's very popular or it's very resilient to downward pressure. Now I did some digging into who actually lives in York, the family like demographics. From my reading, it seems like it's mostly large houses and very popular among immigrants. So maybe from that perspective, mortgage rates are not as big of a factor maybe to them. What was interesting is Toronto West has had one of the biggest drops since May. However, sales continue to slip in fact, it is the only region that's still dropping month to month. So in terms of detached in Toronto West, I do expect more drop in price in that region going forward. Now, if we look at sale price over list price on average for detached home, you can expect a two to 3% discount on most regions. Toronto East seem to have a very reasonable list of price. Um, there seem to be just so exactly at the list of price, there's no discounts. For Toronto Central and Halton, we see a bigger discount. So keep that in mind if you're making offer on detached homes in those regions. You can probably get away with another 5% off the listed price. And finally, as expected, the list days are still going up, building towards a one month on average. Um, that's how long it takes to get rid of a detached home. So next, let's look at town home. Now for townhouse, Peel, York, and Halton, Durham all bounced up in terms of sales activities. Now for these regions that have bounced up, other than Durham, York, Halton, Peel are among the lowest drops since May. In fact, Halton, Durham saw no change or even a slight increase in price uh, overall. This could signal a price floor for townhomes in these regions, or at least it has dropped enough since the you know, start of the year to entice buyers to come back in. Toronto core remains stagnant for townhome, but to be honest, I'm not too worried or too focused on this part because looking at the sales number, there's very little sales going on, uh, which could suggest that there's just not that many townhome to start with. So that's why data it could be easily skewed. Average sale price versus list price are almost at 100%. So likely if you're buying a townhome, doesn't matter what region, you're probably not gonna be able to bargain for much discount. Also, while some regions are rising on listed days, it's really not that much if you look at the days. It's only a couple of days more than last month which makes sense because townhome, like we said already, when we looked at previous like rate hike data and what they were doing uh, historically, townhome always seems to be middle of the pack. They don't really move that much in either way uh, because it's always being used as a transition between condos and houses. Very niche amount of buyers um, wanting townhome. So that's why whenever there's big fluctuation, they do move, but not as much as we will see in condo and houses. So with that said, let's just jump into condo, which is a lot of you know first time home buyers are eyeing and thinking about. Right off the bat, I am going to ignore Simcoe and Duffer because there's just only a couple of sales there. Now this one makes a lot more sense from our conventional thinking about what would happen to a downward market. The top three bounces, the place that bounce the most are the ones that have the highest drop uh, in prices ever since May. Only exception is Toronto Central. It has one of the lowest drops since May, but still saw a 13% bounce in sales. Now explanation for this could be that it is very close to University of Toronto. So there is going to always be a lot of demand a very strong demand going on no matter what happens from investors or and students studying from abroad. Toronto West, however, sales slow down month to month but median price stays the same. Whether further sales slow down will bring it down or it's truly the price floor, again, this is something we have to take a look, but this place does have a slightly higher chance to continue to see a price drop versus uh, Toronto Central that we just looked at. Also one point that stayed consistent to our previous observation when we look at the past two hikes are that condos uh, compared to townhomes and houses see the lowest drop uh, among off property types in all regions. They are pretty resilient to price drops. Again, this is largely due to investor demand. Uh, this is pretty interesting to see that different regions and property types have completely different trend. Now, before we talk about the price movement going forward, let's look at Vancouver first. 
they don't really have a lot of good overall stats compared to trap so we're just going to skip all that and jump into different property types and also keep in mind vancouver have a lot more regions so the chart may look crowded i'm gonna do my best to isolate what i am talking about again i have uploaded the full report on my facebook group you have access to it and it's interactive so you can hide anything that you don't want to see now looking at detach uh, in terms of sales, North Fan and Delta sales activities continue to drop, while other regions seem to have largely plateaued. If we compare the four months trend, the further you go away from Burnaby or Kukulam, the bigger the drop in sales activity it will be. Now, if we look at the price changes, at first glance, it really doesn't seem to correspond to the drop in sales activity or the plateauing, but it actually makes a lot of sense. For example, we saw places in Burnaby, Kukulam sale activity stabilizing, while further places like Delta continue to slow. But in terms of drop, Burnaby actually median price wise had gone down a lot more than Delta. So that actually can explain why Burnaby sales have stabilized while Delta seem to continue to slow down because one place also perceived to be a lot more popular because Burnaby city core have actually dropped a lot more in medium price, which could entice buyers to come back in and pay attention to Burnaby detached homes once again. So that may be reason why we're seeing the sales activity not continue to drop for Burnaby, but instead have plateaued. Now, what's also important to pay attention to is the month on month changes for medium price. We see a much less drop in places that have sales activity stabilized, such as uh, Vancouver East or even Richmond that saw a 6% increase. On the other hand, Vancouver West actually had almost all of its drop within these four months happening from July to August. So it could be that some home buyers are finally cracking under the rate pressure. This is something that's very interesting. We should keep an eye on this. Looking at this, I'm kind of surprised the further regions in these four months uh, have, while the sales did slump, it did not drop as much as the city core in terms of median price. Now sales to listing percentage uh, here, we also want to take a look. It, this is going to be very different from the Toronto one, which shows the sale price over list price. Here we're looking at sale to listing percentage, which measures the supply and demand. So the higher percentage means inventory are getting sold faster. Real estate board in Vancouver defines a 20% plus as a seller market. 12% or lower as a buyer market and anything in between are neutral. Now, whether you agree with this percentage or not, that's up to you, but that's the definition. We actually seen most region massively shoot up over the next last four months, except for Delta, Vancouver West, West Vancouver, and North Fan. So again, the places that are outside of the city core are the very expensive places. But looking at the sales number that we just saw, all regions actually fell. So what that meant is that there were a lot of listing so maybe people don't even want to entertain the idea of selling if they're not getting the price that they want this is something that we have to keep in mind it's actually very important when we're going on the last section discussing the price direction going forward but next let's look at townhome first now this is a very different picture from the uh, detached home sales number have stabilized uh, month to month Prices also seem to be stable. There is some slight drop over the last four months, but it's not as drastic as the detached home. Other than Vancouver West, which had the most drop, 16% over four months, places like Coquitlam and Vancouver East actually saw a constant increase for town home median prices. Now the sales to listing percentage also tell a very similar story. Other than West Vancouver, the rest are actually quite similar to May's activity and it's quite decent, especially Burnaby and Coquitlam Core. Now further out places again see a bit uh, weaker percentage, so they're selling slower, but still not too bad. So next let's look at condo, right, which is a lot of first time home buyers focusing on. So wow, look at that drop. That's a huge drop in terms of sales activities. It went off a cliff, but it seems to have stabilized actually for the last two months. In terms of price, this reflects more of what I am expecting with work from home kind of ending uh, or gradually ending and also rate hikes happening. Central location in the heart of Vancouver see little to no drop in the last four months. While further out you go, the bigger the drop you will see. Now, sales to listing again, uh, other than West Vancouver, which is barely keeping up at the 20%, so it's very closely going down to the neutral market. The rest are actually looking pretty healthy, especially Burnaby, Coquitlam, and Vancouver East. Now, looking at this, we're going to talk more in the next section, but it's kind of telling the story where, hey, no matter how high interest rate is, how expensive 
the mortgage gets, you still need a place to live at the end. And people, in the, especially in city core, are still very much willing to buy. So that's why the sale to list percentage remains very high for places like Burnaby and Kukulam. So we have to keep this in mind when we look at the further price action down the road in the next section. All right, so that's what's going on in the last four months in terms of data. Next, let's kind of look forward and see where we can expect house prices to be uh, by the end of the year and also going into 2023. Keep in mind, everything I'm about to say is based on my own readings and kind of a consolidation of all the information I've read. They are just my opinion. So if you don't agree, especially if you don't agree, let me know in the comment down below what do you think will happen and why maybe some of my thinking is not correct. I really wanted to learn other perspective as well. Short term, I still see a lot of pressure until the end of the year. Now, what do we know for sure? Rate hikes are going to come. It, it is going to happen. The next one, we expect anywhere from 0.75 or even a 1%. This is going to make things more expensive. Uh, even if you're on the fixed payment variable kind of mortgage, it will probably hit your trigger rate. You probably are going to see a higher payment. So it might push more people to want to sell the property. But does that mean price will drop further? The only property type that I see as a maybe is detached home. But even then, I don't think we're going to see as big of a drop as people hope or some articles have written. And the reason why is because I really believe that investors will set a price floor on the properties moving forward. And the key here is looking at the rent price. Now, to me, a rental price is a true reflection of supply and demand. Like how many people actually want to move into your city versus how much supply there is. Because unlike buying a home where you can go out and you can borrow money so you can artificially inflate the number if the interest rate is low as we saw in the last two years, you cannot do that with rent. You cannot go borrow money, like borrow a mortgage and pay for rent. So if it falls and it, or if it goes up, these kind of rental price is an actual representation of real supply and demand. So this is why I think rental price is extremely important and, a, and also a good tell on the house prices moving forward. So if we take a look at the rental moving, and I'm going to use rentals.ca report here, they do a fantastic job every month. They are all actually trending up except for Winnipeg, as we see on the graph. Now to further confirm this trend, we can also look at condo rental per square footage. Uh, it is also trending up on average. Actually, it went up quite a bit, especially in Vancouver and Toronto, which means you can charge a higher rent right now uh, for the same property and people will pay for it. Why? Because they have no choice. We can see a very similar trend for detached rental in Vancouver, Toronto and Ottawa as well. Now, with immigration, we all know that it's going to stay elevated, right? Government want to encourage more immigration. We also know that unemployment rate is at the historical low. It is ticking up because of interest rate going up, but it's still very, very low compared to historic figure. So while there is going to be a recession around the corner, or you may argue we're in one already, the rental market likely is going to remain extremely strong. And so this means that there will come a point, if not already, the investor is going to take a look at how much they can sell the property for on the market right now versus the rent they're able to get. And they will come a point where they're saying that, hey, if instead of taking this lower price, I much rather just rent it out because mathematically or financially, it actually makes a lot more sense to keep renting it out and try not to sell it. Now, I'm actually going through something like this personally because I do have a three bedroom apartment in Vancouver that I'm looking to sell. It started two weeks ago um, and I spoke with my uh, property manager and she said that if I were to rent this out, I can easily get four to 4.5K a month and it will probably rent out uh, within the day. So based on those kind of info, I've done the math in my head and to compare the cost, etc. It really doesn't set me back financially if I decide not to sell it and instead I rent it out maybe for a year or two. The only reason that I like to sell right now is because I really don't like the inconvenience of holding multiple properties. And also, you know, if I want exposure into real estate, like I said many times, there are other vehicles that I can do just as well, if not even better, uh, that can further capitalize on the high rent right now. But other than inconvenience from a financial or cash flow standpoint, there's really no reason for me to take a much lower sale price um, than what I'm listed already uh, just to get rid of it. Moving on, another thing we need to take a look moving forward to kind of guess where the price is going to go is we have to ask ourselves, how long can the sellers hold out and hold this kind of price versus Bank of Canada can hold their interest rates. 
right now for all homeowners, including myself, I know it sucks right now, uh, especially if you're on a variable mortgage because payments are all going up, inflation is high, all the costs are going up. But how long can Bank of Canada raise or even sustain this higher interest rate before a true recession happens where unemployment shoots up and they're forced to lower it? Bond market, if we look at their reaction, they are actually projecting a rate hold as early as the end of this year or early 2023, and then a rate drop within the first six months of 2023. Now, if inflation is easing like people expect going forward, then there is even less reason to sustain the rate. This video, we're not going to dive too deep into what we expect inflation going forward, but there has been talks that shipping demand is fastly weakening in Asia, uh, mainly due to China really lowering the output because there's a major recession you know, happening within, and also Europe really lowering their demand because of double-digit inflation, and also their upcoming energy costs going to be extremely expensive. Now, if all these are happening and ships are, you know, relaxing on their demand, then what that means is there could be a surplus of ships. And then very quickly, also what that means is a supply chain constraint is going to fade away, which will help every single category of inflation in North America except housing costs. Now, obviously, this may not be true because, like I said, there is the energy issue with Europe, which may make oil price go back up by the end of the year, which will you know, bring back inflation again. So this is going to be a tug of war. It's going to be a struggle. We will have to observe going forward. Now, with that being said, that doesn't mean that this is true for all region and all houses. All these that I'm saying or all the stats we're looking at are just average. So within there, I'm sure there are still going to be distressed uh, home sellers. So you can still find a lot of gems inside. But my point is really don't get too carried away or excited looking at headline. Uh, if they say, hey, market dropped 10% or market went up 10%, it's probably not going to be the case for your own region and the own property type that you're looking at. So do more research there. So that's everything I want to share with you guys today. If you like what I'm talking about, make sure you hit the like button once. If you don't like it, hit the dislike button twice. Next, what I want to hear from you is what do you think about the housing market right now? What do you see going on around you? Let me know in the comment down below. And as always, if you like these kind of videos, I do upload them 8.30 EST. So make sure you like, subscribe to the channel, click the bell button so you get all the notifications in the future. All right, this is Jackie Cole. I hope you found this interesting. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.